Hi everybody, I'm just going to go over this quiz question with you. So, um, to add to your social security, you want to have an additional monthly income of $900 per month from a fixed term annuity when you retire. Take the term to be 22 years, so you'll be retired for 22 years, and uh, my little joke of course on these things is, well, you better hope you die because uh, you're not going to have any money after that 22 years. So. You know, 60, retired 65 plus 22 equals 87. Better hope you're dead by 87. Right. I'm not a fan of, of these uh, fixed income retirement accounts. You might you might know that. Uh, so anyway, assume an APR of 3.19% compounded monthly. How large will your nest egg have to be at retirement to guarantee the income described above? And please round your answer to the nearest $1,000. So you might have figured out we need the nest egg needed formula. So we plug in the annuity goal and then this is the rest of the formula. So we need to find the monthly interest rate R and the number of monthly payments T. So number of payments T, well you take your 22 years and in each of those years is 12 months. So times that by 12 and we get 264 monthly payments. Okay of $900 until your money runs out. But it's you're not just you know, you're not just um there's interest being accumulated on top every every month also. So so that's what complicates this whole process. It's not just um it's not just, you know, a, a bunch of cash in a suitcase and you're taking out $900 every month. It's 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 in um it's in an account and it's earning interest, right? So the rate is 0 0.0319 over 12. We've got to get the monthly interest rate. So we take the annual percentage rate divided by 12, right? And let's see what that gives. 0 0.0319 over 12. And it gives this number, right? Now that's a never-ending decimal. I'm going to probably just use this 0 0.0319 over 12 and just use that directly in the formula. But let me write this down anyway. 0 0.00265833 and going on forever, right? This goes 333 on forever. Now, I mean, you could probably use as far as there in your formula, and I'm sure you would come up definitely it would round to the nearest thousand dollars correctly. I'm, I'm, I'm dead sure. But just for fun, I'm going to show you how to use the whole thing in the formula and, uh, to, to get the very accurate result, um, just to make sure you don't have any rounding errors in this question or other questions. So we take our annuity goal of 900 and multiply that by 1 plus r to the power of t. Now, um, if I was doing my 1 plus r, I could just go like one point that and then put that thing to the power of t. But I'm going to do parenthesis 1 plus, and I'm going to take this guy, 0 0.0319 over 12, and then put him to the power of t, 264. See that? Then I'm going to subtract 1. And that's the top. Okay? Now I can put that in the calculator and um, kind of save that number and then divide by the bottom um, or to be um, really fancy I could do a one line calculator entry well let me just start with the top anyway and then we'll 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 do it all together if we want to so 900 uh, parenthesis parenthesis 1 plus 0 point oh sorry Right there we go. Uh, is that that going to work there? Oh, sorry. Zero. Sorry. Zero three one nine over twelve to the power of two six four and then minus one. Okay. And then press enter. Okay, so whatever way you calculate the top, we should get this number here, right? So, but, and again on this, you know, we've got to make sure you've got parentheses here around this, and that power is just attached to this. And then 
like students always forget this parenthesis around the subtract one. Don't you gotta remember that parenthesis there and this parenthesis here, right? So in any case, that gives us on the top, um, you know, nine one three point uh, nine five two seven. Um, you know, 881 or whatever. I mean, I guess I'll just write it all out. You don't really need to write all that out, especially if we're just rounding to the nearest thousand dollars. But um, this is also contained in my answer. So like on my calculator, if I pull up the answer, I go like second and then I hit A and S down here. See that? Then that's, if I press enter, that number is contained in ANS for answer okay so in other words if I want to I can go second answer and then divide that by whatever I get on the bottom right so that's another trick right so I go answer divide by whatever I get in the bottom so the bottom it's R times 1 plus R to the power of T so R is uh, this over 12. So I'm going to go 0 0.0319 over 12. Okay, and I might put parentheses around that and then times that by 1 plus 0 0.0319 over 12. That's 1 plus R to the power of T, to the power of 264. So my question to you is, how does the calculator know that I just want this to the power? That how does my calculator know to put that to the power of 264 and not uh, this as well? Like how does it know that I should do this exponent and then multiply by this, right? How does your calculator know that? So the reason is because your calculator understands PEMDAS. Your calculator is very good at PEMDAS. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, right? Parentheses, exponents, multiply, divide, add, subtract. Okay, your calculator is very good at that. It's going to do the exponents and then it's going to multiply, right? So don't worry about that. And if we put all that in as a one line entry, that will work out. Now my mode is on math print on this thing. I'm going to put it back to classic because if I put it up back on classic then um, this little hat guy for the for the exponent will show up. So 0 0.0319 over 12. Sorry, let me just make that try to make that steady, right? Parenthesis. Oops, you can't see it. You see it there? There, right? 1 plus 0 0.0319 over 12 and hash, so to the power of 264, enter. So that's what I should get on the bottom, right? Now, of course, that's my new um, answer. So, um, Anyway, 0 0.005357879. Okay, so this number divided by this number. I'm sorry, I could I could write those out. Sorry, I could do that. I could go like 913.9527881 um, over 0 0.005357879. Five, seven, eight. That would make sense. And so that should give me the correct answer, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to type this number and then divide by ANS. So because that's contained in ANS, uh, so um, I'm going to type nine one three. Because uh, let me show you. So if I go second ANS, now that's the new answer. Now watch. Okay. So contained in answer is the zero point zero zero five number, right? So I'm just going to pipe in nine one three. Uh, point nine five two seven eight eight one. Or, sorry, and divide that by second ANS, and there's my answer. Uh, one seventy thousand uh, five eight one point oh eight. Okay, 
And even better would be to type all of this in and then divide by the bottom and do it all at once. Now that's kind of, it's easy to make a mistake with calculators doing that, isn't it? But you're welcome to try. I mean, if you want, but you just have to make sure that you put the, if you want to do, like if you want to do a one line calculator entry, you got to go after this, go divide and then type in this thing. But make sure you put parentheses around the bottom, okay? So you type this out, go divide and put parentheses around the bottom. That's a great way to do it. It's just sometimes it's hard to see all of that in one line and easy to make a mistake. But you're welcome to try it all at one go. But we should get that whichever way we do it. And again, if you think about the context of the problem, do you think that's a useful answer? Do you think like the 8 cents is useful, the 581? Think about this problem. You want to have an additional income of $900. Assume the APR is 3.19%. Do you guys think interest rates stay the same like every year for 22 years? Ever heard of booms and busts and recessions and depressions and tech booms and tech busts and who knows what the stock market's going to do, right? And and maybe that interest rate go, will will be 7%. Maybe it'll be it'll be different every year. Who knows what, right? So the whole question is, it's it's ridiculous to give a, an answer, you know, to round this to nearest cent, let alone the nearest or the nearest hundred dollars is still silly. I mean, so you know, absolutely round that because in real life you would say about one hundred and seventy-one thousand dollars. You know, you wouldn't say. In fact, you'd you'd probably say around. You'd probably round that to two hundred thousand dollars, to be honest. Um, and and this this interest rate would be you know between four and eight percent or something like that. You know you wouldn't you certainly wouldn't have that narrowed down to three point one nine. But um, but it's still useful to be able to do the math uh, given a particular interest rate anyway, right? But yeah, that's why I'm rounding to the nearest thousand dollars because it makes sense in the context of this question, right?